It's the topic that'll make you scream, finish him, faster than a pimp in a hurry. Get ready to test your might because it's Mortal Kombat 1, the video game. The, the first one. No, like, like the first first one. No, not the second first one. No, this is the one that has Liu Kang in it and, and, and Scorpion and, and Raiden. What? Mortal Kombat 1 has them too? Well, that doesn't help at all. Oh, well, shit. Ah, fuck it. Let's not make this intro longer than Robin Shoe's pants. Gonna hit the reset here. Opening credits? All right, that's good. Is this the uh, Sega version? All right, even better. Just gonna A-B-A-C-A-B-B, -A, -A, a little uh, blood code here for you. Because it's Mortal Kombat the Video Game, 1992. This week, on oh, nothing good. Lovely intro as always, Mac. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure what Mortal Kombat we were talking about until you just cleared the air for us. Well, I mean, we're talking about Mortal Kombat One today, and there's yeah. two Mortal Kombat Ones. I like that we've hit the point in video game franchises that they're just resetting and not giving a fuck. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like there has been eleven Mortal Kombat video games plus whatever side Mortal Kombat video games they've come up with. Right. And instead of just being like, we got Mortal Kombat XII, they're like, no, fuck it, Mortal Kombat One. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like it's like a reboot, but it's not. It's like a it's a sequel. It's a continuation, but it's number one. It's a continuation, but it's number one. Yes. Right. Yeah. Clear as mud. Have we have we have we entered like the multiverse with Mortal Kombat? Like a multiverse technically in, yes. in a world of multiverses? Well yes. Yes, technically. I mean multi realms. I'm not, yeah, I'm not super well versed in the the storyline to this this new one, but I have a general idea that Liu Kang is just now the, the, the protector of the Earth. He's realm, like the Raiden. And he just started over everything. And in this reality, Raiden is one of the champ, like one of the defenders of Earth, not the God of Thunder. I, don't, I didn't. And see Shang that. Tsung is like a, 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 a member of the Earth forces going against Shao Kahn, not one of the villains. Like it's like Liu Kang's like Thanos here. He snapped his fingers and, and made the world the way he wanted it to be. I feel like of all the characters in the history of Mortal Kombat to this point, if anybody was going to snap their th their fingers, I think Liu Kang would be like fourth on my list yeah well, yeah he's not at did. the top of the list but he's the champion so yeah. he can do whatever the fuck he wants he's like the lamest champion like of all the characters <laughs> in mortal Kombat that you could have luke hang is like vanilla fucking ice cream yeah, but he's the most honorable yeah there's a reason he's the actual I mean, person yeah. chosen yes. to yes. Be the there's a reason champion. on the character select screen he's the one in the middle oh i never even noticed that yeah. good call well how about that yeah. <laughs> bicycle kick that's right <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know what was happening there for a second yeah, until you said you. until you said bicycle kick because You're like, I, oh yeah, that's the noise. I yeah, got I got really, it now. I, th I thought I was gonna have to call nine one one for Jones because something was <laughs> happening. Not, I'm not seizing up on you. I thought like the I thought the CD just kind of like stopped and just yeah, just, just spinning and scraping, just, yeah, just skipping the shit <laughs> yeah. out of it. Uh, so uh, before we get any further, usual song and dance. What are you guys drinking this fine day? I'll go first. Uh, it's fall, so I'm drinking something a little seasonal. Uh, taking a break from beer, at least for this episode, and I'm drinking a mead uh, from Arsenal Cider House. It's an orange blossom mead. It's pretty good. Really, really it's fucking pretty good. fancy. Yeah. yeah. It's very refreshing, and it's just under 7%, so it can sneak up on you, but it's pretty good. I love Arsenal Cider House, man. There's, yeah. Their stuff's so good. It's legit. It's legit. Yeah. Is it legit? Too it, legit to quit. It oh. might. You just went there. I was going to build it up. It might be too legit. No. Wow, shit. <clears throat> uh, you were going for the slow burn. I was going to go. And I, just, like, I just jammed it right in just there. Just like in Hot Rod when he's like, I was, once I was legit, but now I'm too legit. But now I'm not legit. So in fact, I must quit. <clears throat> so uh, I'm drinking, uh, <laughs> and I don't know how to pronounce this, if I'm pronouncing this properly, uh, Lagunitas Brewing Company. Uh, a little something something. Caught by in the store and I said, I could use a little something something. Why not? Uh, I'm about to try it right now. It is 7.5%. 
the can says it's very smooth, and I can admit that it is. It's quite t- quite tasty. Yeah, nice. That's good. So you know, um, what are you drinking? Well, well, before I go ahead, I thought you were going on a, <clears throat> another sidetrack. So I, I am going on side. Track. I am actually because <laughs> well, because you know Jeff Jeff had mentioned it, it's fall, right? We've officially the calendar has flipped once again. We're in a new season, and in case Jeff's beer was not enough to inform me that it's fall, and in case the temperature outside, which, of course, gotta fucking love Pittsburgh. When a season changes, Pittsburgh doesn't fuck around. It flips the switch hard. Pittsburgh either doesn't fuck around or just forgets to flip the switch for a while. That's, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be October to 80 degrees sometimes. Right. Like, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah. Like, it, it was like, oh, this is the, uh, the, the, the autumnal equinox, fucking 55 degrees and rain. Yep. Like, and there is rain. That And there is rain. Um, but in case you, uh, did not know those things, when you walk up to Jeff's house, his 12 foot skeleton, and I, I had to go ahead and point this out cause I was not expecting this when I pulled up to the house this morning, um, is holding a fucking pet dragon with a chain. Yep. I thought that we were picking it up at our, That's at our house. New. That is new. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Um, yeah. I'm I'm fully expecting that when we get to the uh, to the annual Halloween party here, Jeff, that that son of a bitch has red eyes glowing and it's going to be breathing fucking fire. Uh, it does both of those things. Well, it breathes smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what that's kind of yes. what I meant. Yeah, yes. not actually like gonna like fucking launch a flame thrower <laughs> <Plant thrower. laughs> your front yard. No, it uh, it moves and lights up and breathes smoke out of its mouth. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Yeah. How the fuck do you find something like that? <laughs> The internet, man. Like Amazon, Amazon, baby. You can find Damn. anything on the internet. That's that's true. Holy shit. Well, that being said, I am drinking uh, Three Floyd's Zombie Ice. Uh, it's an undead double IPA. So Is it oh, any double. good? Uh, let's find out, gentlemen. God damn it. Six minutes in, I'm already nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is a that is a good beer. Oh, good. Now, will I be undead by the time this uh, podcast is over? Will our listeners? It's you're drinking the smallest can on the table, but I it's am. also the highest ABV. It uh, yeah. So what is it? Eight. Eight and uh, a half. Eight point five. Woo! Yeah. Excellent. Well, it's outstanding. Good, it's a good flawless. Thing. <laughs> it's a good thing I got a lot of shit to do. Today. Finish him, beer. Finish him. Yeah, you just can't have a second beer because we learned previously that I'm you gonna, will fall asleep. After we're done recording this, I'm going to step off the chair and just go whoop dee and just mm-hmm. fall right down. Um, guys, before we really dive into the topic at hand, I think we need to uh, address an elephant in the room here. Something we need to let our our dear, sweet, succulent listeners know, um, because as this episode premieres. <clears throat> um, we've got some news coming up for uh, the end of this week, don't we, gentlemen? We do. Some pretty big news yeah. to share with pretty the Pretty exciting stuff. Uh, we will once again be gracing uh, Pittsburgh Gaming Expo. Yep. Live and in person. Yet again. They, they're letting us they, For some they, reason, they're like, you know what? They only insulted half the room. Let's bring them back this time so they can insult the whole room. Yes. Like, in, in, the, in, the, in the lost recording of that, of that episode, yes. um, <laughs> uh, come was said a lot. More by me than Noah. Noah went into this with the, with the, uh, the full mandate, intention, of, full intention yeah. of just saying come more than anybody else. And I think I, I I outcame him two to one. I'd agree with that. I've never heard anyone say I outcame him. <laughs> yeah, by but here we are by buckets. Uh, um, <laughs> salty buckets. Uh, Steph uh, Steph had said uh, when we she's like on this one. Can you guys not talk about um, like a bus full of like children about to go off an edge or Herb having sex with the Sega Channel? We can't make any promises. I would love to not have to hear about the Sega Channel uh, sexual innuendo, but we all know that's probably not going to happen. But if you want to hear those things actually happen, <laughs> we'll be live from the Pittsburgh Game Expo this Saturday, Monroeville Convention Center, uh, Saturday, September 30th at 8 p.m. in panel room number one. Because we're number one. That's right. <laughs> Fucking eight o'clock too. That's a that's a that's a solid time. What was our time last year? Was I think it, six. Was it I six think, or seven. Yeah. yeah, somewhere in that area. All right. It's gonna be quite. So, uh, what are we talking about though? 
We are talking about wrestling video games. So wait, hold now. Here's the oh, let's let's pull the curtain back here. So are we talking about No Mercy? Or are we talking about wrestling video games? We are talking about uh, the worst wrestling games and the best wrestling games and why that's No Mercy. Okay, that's okay. Good, good. Wait, good. both of them are No Mercy? Ha! No, no. no. <laughs> we just want to clarify that somebody might have, somebody might have heard to say that, Jeff. Yes. And like we're going to shut off this podcast. Yeah. No, so, all four of you. I'm, 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 you know, you know me. I'm not like super big on public speaking. Uh, last year was fine. I was very nervous, but we got through it. I got through it. Uh, this year, I'm interested because it's one thing to talk about a niche topic. But to talk about a niche of a niche topic, uh, I wonder how many like ones of people are going to show up for this. <laughs> They're going to see the sign and go, yeah, I'm going to skip this one. Well, the, I think the thing that's great about it is that when they see nothing good, no mercy, they don't exactly know what that means. So I feel like we're going to like catfish them a little bit and we're just going to, you know, kind of. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna set a nice little internet picture for them, and then when they show up for the first date, we're just gonna completely fucking pull the carpet out from under them. Yeah, and be but like, yeah, the the fine folks at PGX they know what the description of the topic is, but on all their promotional materials, it just says nothing good, no mercy. <laughs> like yeah. we should like we're gonna no, mercilessly berate you. <laughs> yeah, and we're we're in a good spot. I mean, eight o'clock is like an ideal. Uh, time it's it's the last panel before uh the main band takes the stage in the main room at nine so uh it's sort of in between the bands that are playing on the main stage so uh i'm hoping for a pretty good turnout <clears throat> yeah last year we had what maybe two people three people that got up in the middle of the the panel and and walked out uh <clears throat> possibly yeah somewhere in there. i i'm hoping we can do better this year and get most <laughs> of the room to just get up and and, and walk out i'm hopeful because like Wrestling fans, the, the one of the best parts about wrestling, professional wrestling, in my opinion, is that it really can transcend all walks of life. Any type of person can like professional wrestling. People, because like you know, we would go to our the wrestling shows and go, oh look at that, these are our people. Like you know, there are types of who will go to the show, sure, but the people who watch on TV who will never pay money to go to the show, maybe will never pay money to do a, watch a pay per view or anything like that or get the WWE Network. No, no, but they'll watch Raw. They'll watch SmackDown, they'll, they will watch Nitro, they'll watch whatever, they'll watch AEW, all that stuff. Those people could be anybody. And I feel like there are probably going to be a very significant amount of people at the convention who like professional wrestling and probably really like No Mercy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, feel like, I feel like with um, with cons in general, like wrestling fans and cons kind of go together. I mean, I remember the Jeff. I think it was maybe it was the three of us that went uh, out to the the Pittsburgh Comic Con one of the first times, like in like two thousand two, two thousand three, when we were just kind of becoming friends and everything. And I was like completely caught off guard that there was a fucking wrestling ring set up, oh, yeah. and there were That's matches right. going on. Yeah, um, in the middle of this con, and I'm like, well, those are two things that I wasn't really connecting. But like, anytime you go to a, a Comic Con or anything, there's always a wrestler there true. to to, to do autographs and everything so i feel like i feel like cons and, and wrestling tend to go together pretty well so yeah i think yeah we'll, the clientele is pretty similar yeah in terms yeah. of the, the target demo audience if you will which if you think about that as as niche as our podcast can be sometimes we should have much broader appeal you got to get the word out maybe yeah maybe well i'm I mean, looking forward to talking about uh the glory that is no mercy and the and the, and the journey that it took to get to the greatest wrestling game that's ever existed. Yep. Still to this day. Yeah. In my and some opinion. of the shit that came after. There were some things. Yeah. We're looking at you, Mayhem. We're looking at you. Um, but that is for another evening. Uh, today, we are talking about 1992's Mortal Kombat. Oh. Mortal Kombat 1. Not to be confused with Mortal Kombat 1 that came out last week. So, when you think about Mortal Kombat, what do you guys think about? Like, right, it's just like it's just OG Mortal Kombat. Not the franchise, just Mortal Kombat. Because I'll tell you what I think about. I think about uh, like cheesy '80s kung fu flicks. I think about grit. I think about ridiculousness. I think about irreverence. I think about not taking itself too seriously. If you, it's funny. Obviously, I couldn't tell you the last time I played Mortal Kombat, like the first one. I how many decades it's been, right? But going back and watching some just some like long plays of some characters and just on Sega on and on the arcade, I want to compare the two. Uh, it brought me back to a place, man. The vibe of that game was like unlike anything 
that came before it. Nothing was like Mortal Kombat. Nothing felt like Mortal Kombat. You know, the fact that you have this incredibly serious storyline. The fact that there were actual really, like, tangible... There's lore to this game, right? Like, Street Fighter had lore, but not like Mortal Kombat had lore. Yeah, it was for, for, for it being the first in the franchise, they laid a lot of groundwork. Yes. Like, that still That still stands today. Yeah. Like, I, if, I, if, if you ask me, like, when I was a little kid, like, playing uh, Street Fighter uh, Championship... Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition... The most story that you were getting out of it was in the instruction book, like the, the characters' backstories, and that was all you were getting. Yeah. But Mortal Kombat did that with the instruction manual, and then gave you shit to read in the game. And then when you beat the game with the character, they gave you an ending for the character, like a real, like, this is what they did. Johnny Cage went off and became, you know, Mortal Kombat the movie and, 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 and subsequent sequels, you know, stuff like that. It's so cool. Uh, I think that Mortal Kombat is such a weird mix of seriousness but not serious at all like the toasty man like none of that makes any fucking sense yeah. it doesn't even line it's very arcadey but it's so serious we got soul stealing shang sung we got you know undead uh, ninjas looking for vengeance you know yeah it, it definitely felt like an old kung fu flick and uh, what i love about mortal kombat and you know when i when i think back to it you know the first thing my mind goes to is fatalities and you know the the blood and guts that we got mm-hmm. The 2D blood and guts, which, you know, the way they did all the sprite animations was pretty ambitious for the time uh, because most games weren't leaning into that. If you look at the other fighting games that were on the market, particularly Street Fighter 2, there's a lot of similarities in terms of the style, but it felt so different and so unique. And, you know, it was a cultural phenomenon when it, when it happened. Uh, and it, it was just... It was so different than everything else that was out there. Uh, but at the same time, it was so edgy compared to everything else that was out there, which was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I... Um, <clears throat> when when it comes to... When it comes to uh, Mortal Kombat, um, for me, like the first thing I was thinking about, beyond all the things that you guys mentioned, was that fucking commercial. Right? <sighs> And and Jones, I'm 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 so thrilled that you like found it and shared it with us before we uh, before we started recording. Um, just the guy on the street. Yep. Just you know. Well, they so they remade that commercial for this new Mortal Kombat with Dave Batista yep. as the and, guy yeah. yelling, yeah. Mortal Kombat and sort of rallying the troops. Yeah. Uh, but it it was it was very reminiscent of like the old uh, Raw and Nitro promo videos. Like, that's what that commercial felt like. Yeah. Uh, and it was... That shit still holds up. Oh, completely. It's a jam. And it's... And, okay, so for me, uh, we're talking 1992. I was only 10 years old. And I can tell you that I may have played the arc, the cabinet, the arcade version of the yep. game like, twice, maybe. I was too young to be spending that much time in an arcade anyhow. Yeah. It was like... Parents let me go in for a little bit, here's some quarters. When those quarters are gone, you're coming back out, sort of thing. Uh, so my my Mortal Kombat uh, real experience was that commercial. It was the fucking commercial. Because it was, like, ahead of the console releases. And seeing it every... Because they they're playing it constantly. Oh, yeah. And you'd see it on TV, and you're just thinking to yourself, I need to have this. I yeah. need to have this game. Yeah, so the, the cabinet came out in nine, August of 92. And then uh, the developers basically had a year to make it portable to consoles. So, uh, or September 13th, 1993, Mortal Monday. And it's interesting going back, like, because games used to be released on Mondays, mm. then they were released on Tuesdays, now they're released on Fridays, and now you get a random Thursday release, and it's like... There are no rules anymore. Yeah, so. yeah. It's a wild, wild west when it, there are when no it, rules, in terms of when shit's coming out. But there's still rules. Because, like you said, right, growing up, shit came out on Monday. And then, I mean, when I first started, like, having money to buy things, it was Tuesday. Movies came out on Tuesday. Music came out on Tuesday. Yeah. Video games came out on Tuesday. And now, like you said, well, it's Friday. But they all still release on Friday. Yeah. You know, which is kind of weird that they keep it consistent with with all types of that media being released around the same, on yeah. the same day. Yeah, so Mortal Monday, it was a big deal. Uh and I don't know the exact numbers. I could probably look it up. But uh, it was one of the biggest marketing campaigns that they had ever done for a video game. 
because they were launching it on every single platform that was available at that time. So it was Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, Game Gear. Uh, what was the other Sega system? Master? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it was a big deal. Um, and they sold a shit ton of copies. I bet they, they sold, did. I was uh, one of them. <laughs> they sold three million copies in the first three weeks. So guys, I got a, I got a confession to make. I wanted to kind of put this in the intro, but but I, I thought it was just too good. And I wanted to talk to you guys You've about this, You've never played Mortal Kombat. I, I, what? Go That's how you're going to say. Go fuck I know yourself. you have. You motherfucker. Mortal Kombat's your jam. You definitely know. played the first one. I, I've played most of them in the franchise. Um, I got Mortal Kombat three days early. Oh. How'd you score that? That's pretty cool. Uh, so, Jeff, you weren't always the... Uh, be all end all of the R zone. Yeah, I know. Barbie Mac was there. Greg DeStefano was there, my brother, because my brother worked for Toys R Us too. Um, so he was able to get it on Friday. And then we played it all weekend before that thing came out on Monday. And I felt like the fucking shit. I bet you did. Like I walked That's into school. Deal. I walked into school on Monday a different man. <laughs> A different nine-year-old man. So you showed up nine-year-old with a beard. I did. <laughs> beard and a fucking mortgage. There's like blood splattered on your, your <laughs> yeah. shirt. Um, when you guys got Mortal Kombat, what what did you get it for? Wait, I was just, wait what did you get it for? Sega Genesis. Good. I was going to say, because we, we ain't playing that gray sweat bullshit. No, fuck that gray uh, sweat bullshit. Of course I don't Sega Genesis. Great. Yeah, and fatal- no fatalities either. And no, I mean, they had fatalities. They were toned down. Yeah, they were Although, real. Although, can I be real with you, though? I don't know how much of the fatalities you guys remember. But the Sub-Zero Super Nintendo fatality was actually, in my opinion, superior and more fitting for the character because in Sega and on the arcade, he would, like, remove your head with the spine hanging, which was cool. It was bloody, blah, blah, blah. But on Super Nintendo, because there was no blood, he'd freeze and then shatter you with, like, the little, like, the, the fist strike. Like, that shit was badass, actually. I That's thought that legit. was a better fatality than the one he had originally. How about them being able to fucking port basically two different versions of the game at that point in time, too, right? Yeah, well, basically all they did was go in and, well, they had to reprogram some of the finishers to let, make them less violent, but uh, they basically just re- reprogrammed the color code to change it from blood red to make it look like sweat, sweat. gray. Yeah, just um, dumb. So, <clears throat> I know that you guys, uh, I know at least Mac, I feel, is real big on the, what the fuck was that code? The, the, everybody always talks about the what up, the blood code? No, no, the up, up, down, down. Oh, the, the, the uh, that's the the contra, the contra code. Yeah. So how some people feel about that code is how I feel about this code, right? Because I don't know. I'm gonna be an old man with with Alzheimer's, like laying in some skilled nursing facility when I'm like 97 years old, and I will remember that fucking code. Oh yeah. And I will also remember. Shout out to Sonic the Hedgehog, up, down, left, right, hold, and press start. That shit is just in my brain. <laughs> uh, but the A B A C A B B is like it's like. When codes were such a thing, yeah, and it, and honestly, in my opinion, uh, that code, the blood code, is the most important code of all time, because it completely changes how the game. Oh, feels. without a doubt, oh, yeah. yeah, like yeah, like all other codes, you can level skip. There's a debug mode. You can have God mode. You can do this. You can. Hey, that's all well and good, but this shit allowed you to do something that you're not supposed to be able to do, and how Sega got away with this, or or Midway, or or whoever got away with it. I don't know the story behind that. I don't know if you do. Or I don't. Because I, I feel like they are allowed to do it on Sega. Why couldn't they have done the same thing? I guess they don't have any... I don't know why they couldn't do it on Super Nintendo. They, well, Nintendo they was very clean. Have, Nintendo was the one who pushed back on yeah, that. Very Actually, I, I did read all about that. So, uh, Because Nintendo has always pushed to be a family-friendly friendly console, uh, they rallied against having the ability to do that, which is why they changed... The format of the game for the Super Nintendo, and in interviews, dozens of years later, uh, representatives from Nintendo and in the gaming industry say it's one of the biggest failures in gaming was them not realizing at the time that they should have let that happen. Oh well, Sega outsold Super Nintendo at least two to one. Yeah, without uh, a doubt. With with that. Yep. Um, yeah, that's that's exactly right. Um, just the the fact that Nintendo wanted to, I mean, the Nintendo still is. I mean, it's that's it's their DNA is being really a, a family friendly, yeah. video, you know, system. They came around. Newer versions of Mortal Kombat are uncensored. Well, they fucking like money. Correct. Mm-hmm. Everybody, that's, that's everybody important. likes that. That's yeah. that's really important yeah. when you run a business. <laughs> 
Yeah, the blood coat, the blood, just blood in general. Like I, and, and actually, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, there is such a thing as console loyalty. There is such a thing as console wars and the tribalism yep. that comes with consoles, especially when we were young. Yep. Uh, so I was in a Nintendo 64 kid right so i had friends and peers in my school who were playstation kids we'd always get on get on each other's shit about like oh you know blah blah blah, blah. well like we have cut scenes i'm like oh, fuck your cut scenes i i have mario um <laughs> you have no but, mercy yeah um but i think I, I feel confident that for me this was like the beginnings this is the foundations of my tribalism with, with consoles because you had friends who had the nintendo version of mortal kombat but then you had the Sega version, which was far superior. Even though the Nintendo version was superior graphically, <laughs> yeah, and it was actually, so much better. <laughs> actually, the the control system on the Super Nintendo was more true to the cabinet version than it was on the Genesis. Uh, right. Well, because well. also the Sega controller was really fucking weird at that point. You know, three buttons, yeah, and then like like when Ultimate MK3 came out, six buttons, yeah, you yeah. know, um, yeah, it um. It, it it I thought the Sega version played better, you know. I think that's the one of the other things about Mortal Kombat that I really kind of remember back to it is that um, the fluidity of the fighting game and how how it played and all the different things. You know, I a lot of people. I, I've never been a Street Fighter guy. I've said that on the show before. It just never it it, it didn't hook me like this did. And you know the the gameplay, the way the game looked, and the way that it felt playing it. Um, you know, the, the foundational lore, like you go into this game, we're not going to discover this world. This world's already fucking been here. Yeah. It's got, it's got, you know, it's got scars. It's got history. Uh, Goro's been undefeated for 500 years. That's a long fucking time. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Um, and, and again, just the way the characters looked having, you know, basically digital representations of actual people doing actual moves. Yeah. The way they, the way they did the animation. So they were real actors yep. that they captured in the studio and then basically converted it to 2D, uh, which was groundbreaking for the time. And the, and all the actors who were part of that are you know credited for that. I can't tell you who the fuck any so, of them are. Fun but. fact: I think <laughs> D- Daniel Pasina. Daniel yeah. one. He plays like five different characters. Yeah, he plays yeah. both ninjas. Yeah. He plays. I think he plays maybe Raiden, maybe Kano. Uh, K- and Johnny Cage, I think. I think yeah, he's it's, it's been well. There's two different Pacinas. There's a there's a maybe a Carlos and a and a Daniel, and the one I don't. Know if they're, I'm assuming they're brothers. I hope they are. That's one of the chances. <laughs> That's a very specific last name. I think like they're Smiths here. Yeah, right. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I was. I remember watching uh, just the other night. I'm watching like a long a long play, and then I get to the ending credits. I'm like, how how is how is one man playing like four different people? Yeah. God well, bless. Four him. different styles and all that. Yeah. So the. The lore of Mortal Kombat. So uh, there's multiple realms that exist. Uh, the turn, this particular tournament is being held on the Earth realm. Uh, Goro, like you mentioned, had won. He was undefeated for 500 years. He had won uh, nine Mortal Kombat tournaments in a row. And if you win 10 in a row, uh, you gain access to rule the Earth realm, which is what uh, Shang Tsung was going to do so uh they gathered earth earth's mightiest fighters there were only seven of them now there's like 40 of them well you know <laughs> listen uh, social media man. changes yeah. things uh, yeah, once, once and they, that secret gets out man everybody knows. everybody's, yeah. training. everybody's just everybody's training <laughs> yeah. right it's like fucking ninja warrior you guys remember like the first time you watched like a ninja warrior like oh, the japanese version God, i used to love ninja warrior I don't and, watch it anymore. And now there's it's an still entire on, yeah. yeah, now that well now it's American Ninja Warrior and there's an entire industry of people that that have that has spawned because of CrossFit, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so seven playable characters, uh Liu Kang, who we've mentioned, Sonya Blade, Kano, Raiden, Johnny Cage, Scorpion, Sub Zero. Scorpion and, and, and uh and... Reptile as secret. Well we get in the reptile. Uh, so, so Jones, you're right. So Daniel played Johnny Cage, Scorpion, Sub Zero, and Reptile. Uh, Richard uh, Divizio played Kano. Carlos Pacina was Raiden. There we go. Uh, Ho Sung Pak was also was Liu Kang and was Shang Tsung. Shang Tsung as well. And uh, Chet Stedman was was uh, Sonya Blade. No, that's a joke. It was I was going to say like Malecki, uh, but okay. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so you so you choose one of seven playable characters, and then you fight each of the other characters, and then you have a mirror match against yourself. And then you and fight then, them all again. Then you fight. Go, <laughs> yeah. Then there's like team ones where you're fighting multiple guys and one Endurance. without redurring your uh, uh, recovering yeah. your health. Then you fight Goro. Then you fight Shang Tsung. Uh, and then in the end credits, you get the backstory. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you look at the story after Mortal Kombat 1, uh, it didn't give a fuck who you won with because Liu Kang won. Liu Kang was the yeah. chosen one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Robin Shu, we see you. <laughs> they will uh, in the archives. Yeah, please listen to that motherfucking episode. That's yeah. a fucking experience. That's, two, that's a two. Back when we were inexperienced and had two parter movie episodes because <laughs> we didn't know how to shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, if you guys go back and listen to the uh, to those two episodes in the archives, uh, you will recognize today's intro. This is so true. This is very I gave true. a little. I gave a little in 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 Mortal Kombat One, Mortal Kombat One fashion. I gave a uh, I gave a little bit of a throwback to the intros in that one. So no, I hope you enjoyed it. It's very meta. It was nice work. So Thank you. Having not played layers, Jeff layers, uh, like extensively the cabinet uh, of Mortal Kombat. Uh, I like I may have played it once or twice, you know, two dollars worth or whatever, and then that was that. Uh, but it was enough to hook me. Uh, so I didn't get beyond. If I beat a character, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I probably fucking didn't. Uh, but to sit down and play it the first time, you know, you know. You don't expect certain things, so when you load up the game, like Jeff said, you know, like your little character goes down the thing, showing you all the different challenges, and you start realizing, oh wait, I gotta fight, I gotta fight two people at once, I gotta, <laughs> yeah. I gotta fight the entire fucking roster <laughs> that I just beat the first time around. But when you're ten or eleven years old, you're like, fuck it, I'm, I'm down. And then you go through, you fight through all of that, and fucking Goro just drops down on your ass. Yeah, I don't remember what my response was, but I hope it was holy shit, because <laughs> he fucking shows that up out of right. nowhere. Yeah. Uh, the game, Goro was fucking tough because I played Mortal Kombat on the hardest difficulty. I don't know about you motherfuckers. Uh, That's where you started? Or you yeah. worked your way up to no, it? No, I started very hard. That's hardcore. Very that is, hard. I yeah. How hard? Shit out of that. Very fucking hard. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, and, and Goro uh, was a motherfucker. Shang Tsung was the biggest of the motherfuckers because he would just change into people that you just fought for like the third fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. God damn it. Yeah. yeah. Just um, rotating through. But, uh, so, well, that leads to my question. I have two questions. Who's your favorite character? What's your favorite fatality? Because they may not be mutually exclusive. That is um, correct. That is the case for me. Yeah. I'll let you go first, man. So, uh, my favorite character was Scorpion. Uh, always down for the ninjas. Uh, always have been for this series. Uh, my, now, my ninja uh, allegiance ch has changed over the years uh, because I got real into uh, a reptile phase, right? Uh, and then an Ermac and a Rain phase. I got real good with Rain in, in Ultimate MK3. I really do hope like one day we'll cover Ultimate MK3 because to me that is my favorite fighting game I think of all time. Um, so much fun. Um, but I, my my favorite character to play was Scorpion. Um, the the ninja suit for one thing was awesome. I love the character. Um, I really enjoyed the fatality. It wasn't my favorite fatality, but the fact that he fucking pulls his face off. Mm -hmm. and then lights your ass on fire i'm i'm here for it right yeah. um it was the it was the the grappling hook you know that that he had the, that i just spear, loved yeah. the spear that i just loved the most that's that's really what got me to that character my favorite fatality um was sub-zeros in the sega version um i was i was always a really big uh predator fan uh at that age too and and seeing him pulling your skull and spine out of your body and just kind of holding it up like that reminded me of Predator a lot, like Predator 2. Um, and, and I was here for it. So what about you, Jeff? Uh, my my picks are very similar to yours, although I Kano was my number one. Scorpion was my number two in terms of playing the character. My favorite fatality was also Sub-Zero. Uh, actually, whatever year that was, in art class, I painted that fatality. We had to do like cool. uh, four phases of motion, and so I, I painted that of <laughs> someone's skull Just and <laughs> spine getting ripped out of their body. Got a good grade on it. I bet did, you did. Did did, uh, did you and your parents have to have a meeting with a counselor at school, Jeff, when you did that, or they were no, alright with it? No, they were fine with it. That's Toledo. Yeah. They didn't give a shit. Yeah. Welcome to Ohio, motherfuckers. <laughs> there were, there were no, there's no fucking rules in Ohio. Oh man. What about you, Doc? Uh, so, my favorite fatality was, without question, Scorpions. Uh, 
fucking because there's no blood, but it's graphic at the same time. He just rips that fucking mask off, and you see the, just the face of fucking vengeance. The fucking Ghost Rider. You know what I mean? And he lights your bitch ass on fire. I always enjoyed that. Uh, but my favorite character, and, you know, we're just gonna, we're gonna dive into the deep end on this one, uh, because it was Reptile. No, and here's the deal. Here's the deal. Technically, well, it's reptile. You, could, you couldn't use him. This is true. You could not play as Reptile. But, look. In 1993, there was not a single fucking fighting game that had a secret character. It, did, it, did not, it was not a thing. That was not a thing. And there's a book. Okay, folks. Uh, there's a book that Dave's sitting with him right in front of him. It's, it's the Mortal Kombat 3 Player's Guide. It's it is. like a... Ninja Turtle green with a you know background with r- red bloody red, letters. Red Mortal bloody Kombat letters. 3 on it. I had this book. It's it unlo- it's unlocking memories that I have suppressed. Um, and I feel like many of you who are listening to this either had it or knew somebody who had it because it had all the secret stats, moves, finishing moves for Mortal Kombat one, two, and three in it. Uh, but more importantly, that reminds me of my experience with Reptile because. For those of you who don't know, um, Reptile was a secret like opponent you could fight in Mortal Kombat. Before he was a playable character, later on. Um, I remember reading about in a game pro that you could get access to this fucking character. Because I didn't have this book, because that book did not exist yeah. at the time. Did not. But I remember playing the game, and this motherfucker would just show up yeah, and you, taunt you. Yeah, you had to hit certain criteria in the one level. To get him to appear. That was the bridge. Yeah. yeah. It, it was the pit. The pit. The pit. You yeah. had to... It, you, one, it had to be the pit, if I remember correctly. Two, you had to be a single-player game. You had to be uh, double flawless. Definitely do a finishing move. And I want to say there was like a thing with like the, the moon. It had to be like a yeah. like a silhouette or a shadow. Had to, it, this is the only way it, it was, was wasn't it like, face. Wasn't it, was it a face? Or was it it like, was a face of one of the developers. I thought something I went across the moon. Yeah, like as a face or something. I thought it was like Santa Claus for some reason. I was trying to figure out like what that was, but I, I couldn't remember what it was. Yeah, I don't recall. But if you did that, met all those requirements, which was not a guarantee that you'd get the, the, the moon thing, then if you, you know, finished your character, double flawless... You would then fight Reptile. Now, as a kid, I had never experienced anything like that before. Like, never before. Never like a, like a, it was like the first secret I ever really did. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and I fell in love with the idea of this character, Reptile. And I was obsessed with the idea. And I was obsessed that eventually you could somehow unlock him to use him as a playable character. And you couldn't. Um... And then when he came out in the subsequent uh, sequels, he was the, he was my dude. Him and Cabal were my, my guys. Cabal was my fucking yeah, is my is awesome. favorite Mortal Kombat character. Cabal is a bad motherfucker. He's a fucking awesome. I, I, growing me, a, a huge part of my childhood playing video games was playing against my brother. And my brother would sometimes like he, he would give me just enough to keep me interested. But his favorite thing was just owning me in video games when he really, when he just really wanted to right. Yep. And it all changed with Mortal Kombat 3 and Cabal. Because I figured out how to get like a 16 move, 85% combo with Cabal. And if I would, as soon as I pulled off, my brother knew he was done. Mm. And that was like one of the first times that I ever was better at my brother in a video game. And that was a really big milestone. That's a good feeling. (laughs) That's a big fucking milestone. That and the first time that I outran him. Also a good yeah, feeling. That was a great. I hope, I hope you still remind him at family functions of both of those things. It, we it, it always devolves into NHL ninety four, and uh, and and all of and all of those instances. Um, but you know, occasionally we do. Jones, um, it's like you're reading the book, the way that you described how you get to reptile. It's fucking spot on, man. Like as I'm looking That's through from this, memory, he doesn't have that I, shit no, written he down. doesn't have it written down. That's why I wanted to point that out. Because as it says, here's what you have to do to find reptile. You fucking, it's like step by step. Let me see that shit. Look at that shit. Give me this motherfucking book. Look at that. Of the power. Yeah, yeah. and the awesome thing about <laughs> <laughs> it does, God damn it. I told you, dude. It's step oh, I by missed. Step. I missed part. Never use block. Well, which nobody that's uses. mean, man. Yeah. Nobody you gotta, uses. Got to take some hits. Yeah. But that stage two in itself. Um, was 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 special because you didn't just have reptile in the pit you also had a fatality with the pit 
where you could go ahead and knock your fall guy. Fall down into the spikes. Fall down into the spikes, get impaled. And, of course, at the bottom, when you look around, the developers' heads are there. Boone and, and Tobias, um, which is really fucking cool. And somebody else's face is down there, That's too. That's a nice nod, right? It's a nice like, little... Can you just throw my head in there? That'd be great. But... You know, the, to, to me, Mortal Kombat is is revolutionary. It it completely changed the game uh, of of video games. I think first, and yep. um, well, fighting video games and video games in general, because they they basically said to everybody, video games aren't just for kids. We're gonna grow this shit up a little bit, and you're gonna be here for it. And everything that came after this had to follow suit well that that's the positive spin yeah of that but oh man to that same effect <laughs> there was also a whole lot of negative yeah. pr and buzz and controversy uh over the level of violence and the access that children <laughs> had to that yeah uh and that comboed with a number of games that had come out in 1992 and 1993 uh led to a whole lot of uh government conversation and ultimately led to the esrb video game rating system that we have yeah. today you know and that really makes mortal kombat probably one of the most important video games ever made because uh, it pushed some boundaries oh yeah it definitely did uh, a lot of boundaries that you know I, and I and i couldn't tell you the conversations i have with my parents um i feel confident that when they bought mortal kombat for me they you know there's no blood on the back of the box. There's nothing. Uh, but they sure as shit saw me playing the game with the, cheap, the blood yeah. code in play. Yeah. <laughs> and I, they, I don't I don't know if they ever said, like, hey, you know, that stuff's not real, blah, blah, blah. I feel like my parents respected my intelligence yeah. enough to not say that. And that's the that thing, because, like, at that point in our lives, I mean, we were all kids. We were, what, 10 and 11? Yeah. So it's not like we were going out and buying our own games unless right. we had birthday or Christmas money or whatever or Toys R Us gift cards. Yeah. But, like, our parents were buying that shit for yeah. us. They had Jeffrey so, Dollars at that point, Jeff. That's right. Jeffrey Dollars. All the way paper, back. Paper, fucking all the way yeah. back on that. Gift cards. <laughs> fucking fuck you with gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Jeffrey Cash, man. Oh. My own money with a fucking giraffe's face smiling back at me. <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, it was a big deal. And like I said, I mentioned earlier, it sold 3 million copies in the first three weeks. Uh, sales remained steady, I think, through July of 94. They had sold 6.5 million copies and they had made... 300 million something like that it's bananas is was their gross <laughs> <laughs> that is bananas man um so I, I i gotta circle back to this before we get too far away from it um i want to read you guys the hints that are given during the game about finding reptile look to la luna um right? that's one of them yep look to the, look to la luna but i just want to read these first three to you yeah and and just um you know tell me this game wasn't made for teenagers um, number one, alone is how to find me. So, gotta, gotta play one player. Right. Right. Um, blocking will get you nowhere. Finishing is the key. Right. Sounds like other things I was doing at that age. It's a Kama Sutra book. It's a Kama Sutra book, yeah. There's a lot of flexibility in here. Uh, I did not put that together. You, you must <laughs> find me to beat me. I was not putting that together. <laughs> I'm like, what? oh, I guess you, you, guys, you could look into that way, you, but I was sure as shit not looking at it that way. You cannot match my speed. Because he's really, fa he's like, when you play him, he's like the hardest difficulty version of any character. Yeah. Perfection is the key. Yeah, flawless victory. Mm. Where, where is your brain at? Well, I see where your brain is at. <laughs> yeah. Because I sure as hell not know where I don't know. That go. But I just, I just, yes. you know, the other, the other thing we're covering in this episode uh, and on a recording session oh, here boy. is uh, got my brain in a whole other place. I, I, I see we're kind of tying those things together. Um, so I thought we were doing this the other way, recording. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, sorry, as, uh, as, as you guys were, I just wanted to, just wanted to share that. Um, yeah. I mean, Mortal Kombat, the fran I mean, I don't want to go too much down the rabbit hole of the franchise, but, you know, to kind of what you said, Mac, like, the franchise is excellent, uh, and it's changed a lot. It has made some serious changes over the years. It's no longer just, like, this 2D game. It's, you know, it's 3D. It's, like, I love the X-ray, like, where, like, you, you damage an enemy and you see, like, an X-ray of the bones the breaking view, okay. yeah. and their organs rupturing. And yeah, it's very much like uh, Arkham. The yeah. Arkham games where you get to see that 
that mode and just shit breaking. Well, they, they weren't afraid in this franchise to change their formula. You know, in, in anything, if, you, if you're too much, if you don't change enough, you're going to become irrelevant. And I think really as as video games have evolved and the technology has evolved, Mortal Kombat has evolved with it. They weren't afraid to jettison characters that you maybe grew to love playing the games. I don't know who really grew up loving Johnny Cage and Listen, he and, had somebody had to die. <laughs> <laughs> and and Sony Blade, but um those two were like the most like the, the, the three main characters as you would kind of go around the franchise, Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, and, and Sony Blade, to me are the three most boring characters. Like, I was never drawn to those types of characters in the game. I wanted the fucking crazy ninjas and the dude who has a laser coming out of his eye and, and rips your heart out. I can't believe nobody had that for the fatality as their favorite fatality was Kano's. You know, the reason I didn't... I, it's not that I, didn't, I liked all the fatalities. Yeah, I love that. And like I said, Kano was my favorite playable character, uh, at least in the, the first iteration. And that fatality is fucking awesome. Yeah. But it... it <sighs> Just Harrison rips comparison. into your chest and pulls out your here's, still beating heart. Here's my problem, and that's not my problem. And I, we saw this shit while we were ten. I'm thinking, right? <laughs> Jesus, I know. I, I'm trying to think like why I I didn't even put that in my my top three of fatalities. I think looking at it at now as an adult, I think my ten year old mind is like, I mean that's cool, but he's just reaching into the and he's just pulling out this thing. There's no decapitation. There's no nothing. It's just you can't even tell where he ripped it out. There's no hole. There's no wound. But man, when Scorpion fucking lights your ass on fire, <laughs> god damn, it's sick. The whole body's gone. The it's whole body's like, gone, and, just the, let, and the skeleton falls to its yes, knees. that's fucking yeah, amazing. Which is so cool yeah. about that, too. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I mean, even Sonya Blades, who's arguably probably the lamest of all the... Well, no, Liu Kang's finishing move was, like, the lamest, because it was barely a finishing move. But at least, at least Sonya Blade, like, burned you alive with her... Her kiss, poison her kiss, whatever the fuck that eating action. Her inferno meant. kiss. Um, but yeah, Kano's was cool. I never really was like, a big fan of Kano because uh, he was a, a full on villain, and I didn't like him because I was ten. <laughs> I did, I was not down with. That's fair. You were he was living, a fucking murderer. He's yeah, a terrorist. you had a hero complex, and he murdered Sonya Blade's tw- twin brother. I remember that shit, and that's why she was off. Everybody had a fucking reason. Every character had skin in the game, which I fucking love that about it. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, I just, like, fuck a Street Fighter. Well, I just want uh, the glory of being the best spider in the world. Fuck this, man. The universe is at stake here, folks. You know, you got fucking... I love the, the, the Sub-Zero Scorpion dynamic, right? Oh, it's awesome. The Lin Kuei, yeah. like, murdering Scorpion. He wears yellow to mock the Lin Kuei. I fucking love right? that. And it, like, again, you read... The, I remember being a little kid. I, back when you are little, I, I would long car drives i would carry around certain video game manuals because they had information about the car- and i would just read yeah. them and i you just start getting used to like the storylines and getting used to who is scorpion who is what was what was um because they're all from different time periods technically i think right i think the scorpion sub zero are they're not from the current time period that the game exists in i don't think I don't uh, know if that yeah, I gets. Know. I don't think that that gets fleshed out so in the like first game. I think that that I think that gets added to their storyline a little bit I'm, later on. Because I'm pretty confident they don't exist. Or, I don't think they do. Uh, not that it even fucking matters. Yeah. Uh, but I just love that everybody had skin in the game. Everybody had a reason. You know, Sonya Blade wanted vengeance because you know she wanted to kill Kano for killing her twin brother, who was also oddly enough an FBI agent or whatever. Uh, you, you know, Kano, who's just a fucking murderer and running for his goddamn life. Uh, Raiden, which I don't remember what his... It was just more or less defending Earth, maybe? I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, that was just his job, right? Yeah. That's just, that yeah. just his thing. Yeah. Um, do you guys remember the... Um, the fucking... The, 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 the flying thing that he would do? Do you remember what he would say? Because <laughs> I do. I, I couldn't... I couldn't... When I, when I was playing it again... Um, cause I have a, so going back, right. When I was working at Toys R Us, Sega sold a plug and play and it wasn't like a, it wasn't like the super Nintendo classic or the Nintendo classic or anything yeah. like that. It was an actual, like it came before all that. It was a Sega Genesis that actually had the fucking cartridge port in it. So if you had Genesis games, it was preloaded with 40 games, but you could also put your cartridges in and play your cartridge. It was like another Sega Genesis. And uh, I think I got the last one at Toys R Us because I was waiting for that motherfucker to like go out on clearance. Um, 
And the, the big selling point of it was it had Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 on it. And so I, I hooked that bad boy up and was playing it. And I could not for the life of me figure out what the fuck Raiden was saying. When he Shaheen was Baba Yee! That's what he says. <laughs> um, <laughs> Still don't know what it means. One more time. Oh, I don't know what it fucking means. <laughs> One more time. I couldn't. Oh, you heard it once. No, I didn't hear it. Well, you it's, it's it's not on the internet, so you'll my play my back. my brain was not ready for the sound that came <laughs> well, out. Didn't of your, think you were gonna say it. What? Yeah, my brain wasn't ready for the sound that was coming out of your mouth. So now that I'm prepared for it, well, either way, <laughs> <laughs> he's not giving it. I'm not he's doing not, that again. Yeah. He's not doing it. You only it. do that shit yeah. once a year. Yeah. Um, but that kind of leads you, me to you didn't pull anything. Did you stretch before you did that? At our age, uh, you know, you gotta you gotta worry about that. I made sure I did. All right, good. Um, but yeah. the that leads me to like the point about the audio, right? Because if you go back and watch any footage of the the arcade original, everybody had their own unique sounds, their own unique like attack sounds or damage sounds. Yeah. The consoles did not have that. No. Like if Johnny Cage does like the nut punch to to Liu Kang uh, on Sega, it's Hoo! if he does it in the arcade, it's <laughs> swear to God, <laughs> that's, that's so funny to me. <laughs> but no one else has that type of noise, just fucking yeah. Liu Kang. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, everybody had like something, like or 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 uh, Liu Kang had like his like his flying kicking his wah. But in the, in, but in this, the consoles, it's just all that shit's missing. Yeah, yeah they didn't have the depth in the technology there for that at that point. But it was still awesome. I mean, fucking Scorpion it was absolutely awesome. Just get over it. Oh my god, get over Come that on. Was, Listen, that's one of the most like iconic, truly iconic phrases in any video game. When yeah. you think of Mortal Kombat, you do think of that. Yeah. You don't even have to like the character, but just that fucking spear. Get over here, come here, like all that shit. It was fucking. I love badass. that. You know, talking about Nintendo a little bit and talking about how they they weren't fully on board with you know, and and we talked about brand loyalty and things like that. I was always a Nintendo loyalist. Um, still, still am to an extent, but. Um, I was always really thrown off that as technology advanced and video games got better, Nintendo was still fucking, we're just going to type out what the characters are saying. And they were so late to the party of like having their characters actually dialogue. fucking talk and have dialogue in their games. Mm. And I remember growing up being like, this doesn't make any sense to me because, you know, dialogue is just a fucking sound effect. You play music and all this other stuff in all these games. You can't, you mean to tell me you, you can't, can't, you can't put, put a talk track in you there? You can't put a talk track in there at yeah. all? And then Mortal Kombat comes along I'm like, fuck yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that all the characters basically had something to, something to say. Yeah. Yeah. And going back to the, you know, the, the background and the story, you know, obviously the game came out, but then the developers are like, we still have a lot of story to tell. So I think this was really the first game where after the game came out, then there was an entire year of comic books that came out to fill in all the gaps in the story and to sort of further build the the Mortal Kombat universe, if yeah. you will, uh, which really sort of sets the stage for what comes after. And there was, there's been a whole lot that came after, like I said, with the success of this game, it obviously spawned additional games many many games. uh 24 or 26 to be exact it's uh, crazy it yes yeah. uh, only 11 of those are actually like mortal kombat fighting games like the the blueprint of mortal kombat the rest are you know a little different uh but there's been comic books there's been uh card game like fucking magic there's been i remember movies that. i actually tried playing that yeah. i fucking hated it yeah it wasn't good yeah, there's been uh, movies, one available in the archives, yes. as we mentioned. Yeah. Uh, a newer movie, another newer movie coming out and as a sequel to the last movie. We're going to cover movie. the sequel. <laughs> I'm not sure how much liquor I'm going to have to drink to get through it. Oh, you're going to need a lot. Are we bringing Jackie back for no. it? Because to her, that's her favorite movie Listen, of all time, and that should be a case study in itself. I uh, And I love you, Jackie. I don't mean that in a bad way. I, I, just, I need her. to. I need to figure out how this came to be for you. But I don't know if I respect her opinion on this because that movie's fucking terrible. Yeah. Uh, there was also an animated series, which I vaguely remember. I remember that. It would it would come on, it was on, I swear to God, it was on, because there was a TV show too, like an actual live action show. I, remember that? I, was, was, on I was all fucking about the live action TV good. show. it was not No, it was terrible. It was on after Nitro. Yeah. Yeah, I remember fucking that. weird yeah. that I remember that because it was like such it's a... not weird that you remember that. That was like, 14 years of your childhood is what was that was on after nitro but i don't remember i don't remember much about the show i just remember it existed yeah. 
but I because don't it wasn't very good. Yeah. And then, in addition to that, was something I never knew existed was the Mortal Kombat Live yeah, Tour. I was going to bring that up because I feel like I'm the only person who's ever gone to that. I don't. Know I don't even remember. I don't remember. It was. It was at the. It was here in Pittsburgh. It was at the. There was not the not the convention center. Not what was the old, uh, like auditorium that was i don't think it's there anymore aj palumbo center yeah is it still there uh well they've they just recently replaced it but yeah that's where it was so the one at duquesne right yes yeah uh, and i and i wish i knew where it was but i had a like a like a like a circular that came with it like the like program had what all the was it so it was exactly what you think it was uh, and it was a it was a stage show. There was dialogue. There were a bunch of martial artist air quotes, and there was co- incredibly choreographed fight scenes. Uh, and they had fights, and there was a story of Shang Tsung, Luke Kang, all the characters from like, not all of them, but like a significant amount of characters from like Mortal Kombat three were in it. Like uh, all the ninjas were in it. Cyrax and Sector were in it. Cabal was in it. Jax all these guys and i couldn't tell you this like how the story ended because it was forever ago but my, myself my dad and my buddy jeff not this jeff my other buddy jeff went to the show and i was so fucking fired up for this because there was commercials for it i don't yeah. know how you guys remember the commercials i don't know i guess it didn't come to toledo <laughs> fuck I, well there we go maybe it didn't <laughs> but yeah that was it was a big deal yeah when i saw that when i was doing the you know the background research i was like i do not remember a single thing about that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think the only reason I knew about it initially because there was like a there was an advertisement that came with a paper or something. And then I started seeing commercials for it. And I'm like, Dad, we got we got to go. We got to go. And back, my dad likes Kung Fu stuff. So he's back like, when we had newspapers. Yeah, we used to get a newspaper back yeah. in those days. Crazy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, if I had to give it, I'd say it's a six out of ten show. <laughs> I'm going to say, well, <laughs> it's not amazing. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> they played the, 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 it was a lot of that music. Yeah. It was It was after the movie. So they were cashing in on all of that. Yeah. Well, even like that that song that you just did there, like that shit still holds up. Yep. I was at we were at a football game on Friday, and our band and the other band were competing and doing that song back and forth across the field. That's they were. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, it 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 was and it wasn't, um, because the other. So I've never seen this before, and it, I think it's worth mentioning. Um, and and no uh, way, shape, or form as a detriment to this other. I'm not even naming the school's band name That's because it, I, it, I'm not I'm not doing this to pick on them or anything. But their marching band had 13 people. I said to Jeff, I said I think there's more people on stage at the Dave Matthews concert than actually were in that marching band. <laughs> and um, so it was kind of like, and then like. The other high school's <laughs> band that had like seventy five people were just like, burner, 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 burner. Okay. And, and then they're across like, do, 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 do. <laughs> and then the other band's like, dun, 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 dun. and then just middle fingers up like they, they didn't really do that yeah. but it, it felt that way. But it, yeah, that yeah, song I, holds up. That's right. I'm not I'm not apologizing for anything. <laughs> Dave's just flicking off my child no, in the other room. As I was doing the, the, the noises, she just came down the stairs and just stopped and just did. <laughs> <laughs> just looked at me like... What's like, wrong the, with the you? What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> you adults. Yeah. How dare you? Um, lasting impact of, of Mortal Kombat for you guys. Uh... Like, what do you still carry with you from this game? Reptile. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, secrets. Uh, blood. Which, violence. Gore. Which you know, kind of going back to the the Mortal Kombat movie, which they did a the movie did a nice job of capturing the feel of the video game. I'd say that. Reptile was a secret character in the fucking movie yep. too, and that was and, and probably I think the best fight. I scene don't know also. if I ever marked out harder in a movie theater for oh, when you yeah. heard the voice go reptile and you go holy because, shit because, it's because, happening. because you couldn't you couldn't see you didn't see the green as oh, well man. the way yeah. that it was kind of like it was a it was in that world and it was dark and you know um but yeah reptile and he was badass yeah he was, was whooping Liu kang's ass yeah it was fantastic and his just really high waisted pants and his yeah. weird pointed down nipples i you know yeah i tried to see That's if he had vibe. weird That's a pointed- whole vibe I was trying to see if he had weird pointed down nipples in the video game too, but I just couldn't. I couldn't get a close enough look. You gotta wait till like Mortal Kombat Four. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, see the yeah. nipples a little bit. Yeah, three D nipples. 
Uh, yeah, but that was my lasting impressions. Like, I, it's just, it's the yeah. effect, like, look at that, the effect that it had. They can, it's a podcast. Hey. Um, <laughs> the effect that it had on the, on the gaming industry as a whole, uh, and the fact that because of Mortal Kombat, like a game like Mortal Kombat, we had games like Killer Instinct. Yeah. We had games like Eternal Champions, right? You guys remember Eternal Champions? We're going to do a whole episode on Eternal yeah. Champions. And I'm pretty confident Eternal Champions came after Mortal Kombat because there ain't no fucking way that game would have come out before oh, Mortal Kombat. Oh, fuck no. That game was violent as hell. No, that, that game got greenlit because of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody pitched the uh, developers like, we got this game. No fucking chance. Mortal Kombat comes out. Here's your money. <laughs> Wait, let's try that again. Yeah. Um, but, but here's to take a character and throw him up on a cross and set him on fire. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or uh, uh, pri- what was it primal, War- primal, primal rage? Primal rage. We yeah. don't get primal rage without Mortal Kombat. Nope. Here's a, a fun little tidbit. There was a chance that we did not get Mortal Kombat. Period, because at the time when it was going into development. Uh, Midway got pitched to make a video game ver- version of Jean-Claude Van Damme's Universal Soldier. Mm-hmm. And they started down that path and Van Damme had some sort of agreement with some other studio. So they're like, let's just go back to this fighting game we were working on. And if that would not have happened... Page one, Jeff. Then uh, page, we, we may have ended up one. with Universal Soldier <laughs> instead of fucking Mortal Kombat. Page one of this. And it's kind of funny because I, I don't have any active recollection of this whatsoever. Because I've read this fucking program like it was a you know Mortal Kombat encyclopedia like right. 30 times. But like the whole first page and a half is just Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> See? I don't make this shit up. I'm telling it's you. Right. All, all the gentlemen, <laughs> dear listeners, listen. All right. We live in an age where this is a 150-page book, where this is all basically a fucking wiki article Yes. in today's day and age. But being able to hear Jones and, and, and Jafar here just spitting game and dropping facts and opening up a book, <laughs> kids... A book that was printed... 15 plus years ago. 1995. Holy so, shit. not 15 plus years <laughs> Almost ago. Almost 30 years ago. Almost 30 years ago. You're a little um, off on that, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> My math is not great. As, you know, it's a little early the day. Numbers mapping. a little off on that one. Um, but to be able to like open a book and like just see the facts on page as they're spouting the game is fuck. It's it's a beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen. Go to your fucking local library and check out a book. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> Reading's fundamental. Reading's yes. fundamental. Yeah. yeah. Get your eyes out of your, your fucking computer screens for five minutes and, you know, flip through it. I really, really, really remember that book so vividly. Yeah. That's wild to I'm me. I'm shocked that, that you, like, were able to find it so fast. I knew exactly where it was. And in, in my general home of disarray right now, um, because like a couple rooms are like what they're supposed to be. And you know, when you do like a real big cleaning of your houses and everything, um, the shit that you don't know what to do with, it just goes and like, it goes into the room. other room, it goes yeah. into the other room. And then you're like, Oh, I go, I'll dress that later. That's where we are right now. But like when we were doing this, like, I know exactly where that is. And then I went right to it. And I have these two like old, like magazine, like racks from when I was like, I when I was in like middle school yeah, um, and like I opened it, I had <laughs> Jeff, you'll love this shit. I had like the NHL, like 1994, 1995 yearbook um, and like shit like magic eye books were in there. Right. <laughs> All the stuff that I would kind of get from like the random house, <laughs> yeah. like random house, just that random house, like, f- like flyer you get at school. It's like, Oh, yeah. you can buy books yep. for discounted prices. Right. Uh, and then I was like, it's in there. I know it is. Mm. And, like, I walked into the room and I heard, like, from, like, in the distant corner, I walk and I heard, test your mind. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Yo, and, but before we sign off on this, before we get to you, Jeff, and your last impressions, can we can we just a real quick talk about the test your mind? Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, I had fucking flashbacks <laughs> yeah. from that. Because that shit was, like, that really introduced you to mu- button mashing. Oh, yeah. really hardcore. Really how I started like, my button now, mashing experience. Like, now my C button is broke. <laughs> <laughs> right, like you've, you've, you've shattered something, one of your phalanges. You know, you've, you've hurt yourself. You pulled a muscle, um, and and I, because I remember, because when you played the game, it was like there was wood, there was maybe stone of it was, some sort, yeah, it was and then wood, there was like stone, metal. and then it was but there like were other ones, metal and ruby, there was and ruby diamond. diamond. Yeah, that fucking di- that shit was borderline impossible. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, it was hardcore button mashing. Yeah. He like had to fucking break steel. <laughs> doing that and, and, doing and, that. and, you're, and you're just hitting the buttons as hard as you can to get the meter up over the bar and you got to hope to hit the other button before it drops fucking down that's where anxiety was born <laughs> anxiety didn't exist until 1993 my anxiety started with ninja turtles in the damn level but then it was exacerbated <laughs> during this bullshit like four years later <laughs> oh man that's awesome uh, my lasting impression, you know, I loved the early Mortal Kombat games. As I got older, I think I, I played fewer and fewer of the newer games. Um, and it was just because I, you know, sort of lost interest. But going back and revisiting, you know, this one in particular and the early games, like like Mortal Kombat 2 and Mortal Kombat 3, I fucking loved Jax. It was my favorite character to play in those games. Gotcha! Um, but, yeah, man. but, like, I have such fond memories of this first one, playing it with my brothers uh, when we were kids and, you know, just enjoying the shit out of some blood and gore as some impressionable young <laughs> teens was awesome. <laughs> well, you know, we're children of the 80s. Yeah. The 80s had no rules. Yeah. If you have any questions about the 80s, anybody, a couple things. First off, go back and listen to some of our RoboCop and Highlander and um, this fucking Cobra. Uh, first off, the 80s had a whole bunch of cocaine. Mm-hmm. So nobody nobody had rules in the 80s. When when cocaine's involved, all bets are off. Um, we were all out as kids by ourselves playing in the streets <laughs> yep. until the streetlights came on. Because don't you dare fucking come home before your dad. Right? Right. Eh, fascinating. Like, just get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Come back, come back when the, yeah. when the moon I, is up. I yeah. don't <laughs> care. I yeah. don't care where you go. I don't care what you do. Just don't don't bother me. Don't it's, get arrested. Don't get arrested. Don't get hurt. Don't get hit by a car. <laughs> if you, for my the thing was for me like if you if a bone is not sticking out through your skin or you're not gushing blood, I don't want to hear about it. And like one time I fell out of a tree and somebody had to go get my parents. Fuck, they yelled at me. It was, it was my fault. It was your fault. How dare you fall out of that tree? Like you, you interrupted me in my stories. Like I, I fell in the middle of days of our lives, and Barb was pissed. <laughs> and like somebody had to run down and say, "Dave fell out of the tree." Well, how high? Pretty high. Is he okay? I don't know. She came up, and I'm like laying there. She's like, she's like going through the checklist. I don't see bones sticking through skin. I don't see gushing blood. Why the fuck did you come? You could easily <laughs> concussed. <laughs> Your heart didn't matter. Yeah, I was. I Angel know injuries don't matter. I know there are times that I'm that I had like probably some type of serious head injury that was <laughs> that went completely unreported because you know at those points you just got your bell rung. Yeah. So, you know, uh, <laughs> we were playing football in a parking lot and Dave hit a curb. Jeez. So, but he's um, all right though. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't remember it, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah. He's still, he's still, he can still. Head, tra- head trauma wasn't that. He can still though. go to no head trauma wasn't a thing until two thousand five. Yeah. yeah, but um, the eighties were just a time, right? So like, I, I didn't have Barb and Jim didn't like this didn't offend them. You know, you know, I was watching. Oh the yeah, students. there was there was very little that could offend people at that point in time. But like my parents, like my mom didn't come upstairs and see me and my brother playing. They just go, whoa, whoa, oh, oh my God, oh my God. Like, and just try to like quickly shut the game off. It's like, I can't believe you're doing, like they didn't care about that. Like I was watching Steven Seagal movies with my dad. Like yep. fucking limbs were getting broken left and exactly. right. Nobody cared. There, there right? were 80 sex scenes and it was awkward. But at that point, you've seen enough of it from the time you're a little kid until yeah. you're 10. You've already been desensitized. Liquid right. TV, yeah. Beavis and Butthead, Ren and Stippy, all that shit exists at the point where you've now, you've seen what you're going to see. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and then there's not much shock value left at right. that point. And and that kind of brings me to my my thing that with the games that were coming out at this point in time, it changed how people consumed video games. Because a lot of people started, you know, this is the age in which people were, you know, we were, a, we were growing into uh, who we were as a result of the environment we grew up in right free to do what we wanted to do no real parental supervision you know do whatever you want to do just don't you know don't get killed and don't get arrested right and then as we got into being like teenagers well these kids have no respect they're 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 listening to bad music and they're playing violent video games and you know there's this whole governmental push about 
you know, we the, the kids' morals are compromised yeah. and it's because of these things. No, it's because you didn't give a fucking shit what we did from the <laughs> yeah. time we were five. Yeah. And we grew up like that. You know, I think about today, you know, when I was 13 years old, I was going out to the mall on the trolley by myself and getting into R-rated movies and with with my own money. Um, if you have a 13-year-old kid getting on the trolley going to the mall trying to watch an R-rated movie, child services are coming to your fucking house with your kid and they're going to have a sit-down conversation about why you're a terrible parent and what they're going to do to take away your kids, right? Yeah. It's, it's just different not... Different times. It's just... It's way different. So there was this real big swing that came into After Mortal Kombat and uh, and some of these other games about putting a rating system on on video games. And if, if correct me if I'm wrong here, guys, uh, Mortal Kombat was the, the the final kick that got the rating system put in place. It was, yeah. Yep, it definitely was. Because, you know, I think about our times working in our zone and everything, and, like, somebody's, you know, nine-year-old kid coming in with Grand Theft Auto Five. <laughs> And the mom's like, "Yeah, we're gonna buy this." I'm like, "You sure you want to do that?" Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> you, you you really can't. Just so you know. Just so this you is know. what's in there. Just this so is, you know. This is pretty fucking violent. By law, I have to read this to you. <laughs> this game contains, and then for like five minutes, I read off all the things in Grand Theft <laughs> Auto Five. All the terrible that things your child's gonna be exposed to. And then, like, you would get two moms. Mom number one. Who hears all of that and looks down at their kid like, you motherfucker. <laughs> like, how dare you try to fuck You with tried this. to pull this one on me and the kid's looking at me like, you motherfucker. <laughs> same, same thing. Or there's the other mom who's like, uh, yeah, I know. Okay, cool. I play with him. Cool. So it's fine. Yeah. You clearly it's never. It's actually for me. The mom looked at me and she's like, you didn't grow up in our household. You don't know what we've fucking been through. I'm like, you know what? There you go. This will be cash or credit. Yeah. <laughs> 60, uh, not six, nothing he's seen before. 63.54, whatever it was with tax, right? You know, you you go for it. So, um, yeah, for me, it was it was how it, uh, how it changed how we consume video games. Because everything now has a rating on it. And it's because of this. Yeah. It's come a long way. Yeah, it has. If any of you guys played Mortal Kombat 1? Which one? The, which, new, the which, new Mortal no, Kombat 1? No, I can't one. say that I haven't. I haven't yet either. No, I haven't yet either. I um, I I was looking at that, and and I, I kind of have a rule where within so much time of like a birthday or major holiday, I, I try not to buy things. Just I'm always because... fascinated by this rule. I don't have that type of patience. Allie gets yeah. so jacked at me because I'll just buy yeah. myself. Also, we're in our 40s, so people shouldn't really be buying us shit. I have one person. <laughs> or you shouldn't expect it now that you're I, 40. I don't expect it, but like. <laughs> you would expect the shit out of this. You expect the shit this is, this is called. This is <laughs> you fisc- fucking live for that. This is fiscal conservancy <laughs> more than anything like, else. I'll buy myself something or, or, or like something I've mentioned that I want it, and it yeah. happens to be around October, and like I'll just buy it, and she'll just go, Did, did you already. Did you just buy that? Yeah, I bought it. Okay. See? Well, I don't give a fuck. Be creative. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Damn. Jeff almost there spit out. <laughs> Jeff almost spit out listen, of here. Listen, Damn, Jeff. Said, if I say that to Moses, she's gonna punch the shit out of me. Listen, I'm not saying I'm not gonna get hit, but <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, man, I'm 40 years old. I'm gonna be 41 years old. If I want something, I'm gonna go fucking buy it. I don't have to wait for anybody. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I'm not gonna wait for anybody to do it because I don't have that type of patience to wait in case they do it. No, 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 no. I want it. I'm gonna have it. That means the persons in in question who will purchase something for me have to think outside of the box like I do, and and be creative. Because that's true love. Love, listen, it's cool to get something that you want. That's fine. But real creativity, really thinking about the person and going, what do they really want? What could they use? I, I always go with the rule of threes, right? With, when it comes to gifts for my wife. I get a fun gift, I get a useful gift, and I get a meaningful gift. Those, like, the big... Th- everything else after that is like, eh, if I come up with something... But it's got to be something that I know that she'd really like to have that she's mentioned in the past, whether it was six months ago or a year ago or six weeks ago or six days ago. Something that's like romantic, meaningful, that like, I don't know, like whatever. And then there's the one thing that like she hasn't mentioned, but I know sure as shit she can use and will probably enjoy having it. I don't know. Like, I don't want her just to buy me like a video game. She can. That's cool. But I'm like, I could have just fucking bought that myself. Show me you really love me. Sorry. Speaking of love, 
If you want to show people you really care, you should buy them tickets for Pittsburgh Gaming Expo yeah, next Saturday, that's right. September 30th, Absolutely. to come see us at the Memorial Convention Center, live and in person at 8 p.m. That's the gift that keeps on giving for at least 45 at minutes. At least 45 minutes. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> at least 45 minutes. And then just like herpes, it'll keep giving it to you mm. on and off for the rest of your life. Yeah, as long as you keep coming back. That's right. On that note. We went, we went from a real uh, interesting point that Jones was making where I was really calling into question my entire gift-giving strategy. Oh, yeah, you've you been doing it wrong the whole time. Yeah, I've been doing it wrong the whole time. <laughs> I have not been doing it wrong. No, no I have. So, you know, I, I'm, I love giving gifts. But in terms of, like, what I want people to get me, yeah, I think about those types of things. But I'm also a practical person. And, and pretty easy to shop for. Because, again, I don't like to often buy a lot of things like that for myself. So, you know, she's not going to fucking buy me Mortal Kombat. But just in the off sense that she might. You know, I'm just going to... Just, just, I'll just... I can put the pause. Well, because here's the other thing. I might get gift cards from her parents. You know? They're like, what do you want for your birthday? I was like, gift cards are good. I can, I can go and pick some shit up with that. So... Can do that. I'm. I'm just gonna put it out here that I. I don't think there's anything wrong with what you do. Uh, I think if that works for appreciate you, appreciate that, Jones. Yeah. Thank you very <laughs> yeah. much. I think if that works for you, that works for I feel you. Like there's a butt coming yeah, here. Yeah, that's you. No, no, there. Will, I was just saying, like, yeah, you know, just I don't want to make it seem like I was dumping on how you do things. <laughs> no, no, no. I, that was I, Jeff. I, <laughs> it's always Jeff. I already know. Uh, that. It's fair. Yeah. yeah, very true. All right, folks, this was fun. It good was, times, good times. Yeah, yeah, it's always fun going back to some of these older games that, you know, have really made an impact on not only us, but, you know, gaming and culture as as a whole. So uh, it's always fun to revisit some of those things. Uh, we mentioned a few times we got Pittsburgh Gaming Expo coming up yeah, uh, this good weekend. Time. And then come uh, join us in person. Yeah. Let us let us penetrate your ear holes. We talk about you know, Audily video and, game wrestling, wrestling video games. Yeah. And physically, so that's and, what you're into. And 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 I'm going to tease this, guys. I'm going to tease this for our, for our listeners. Um, you've been listening recently, and in, in most of the recent episodes, to a panel of three. Yep. Will it be a panel of three at Pittsburgh Gaming Expo? The only way to answer that question is to show up. And find out for yourselves, will it be Jafar, Doc, and Mac, or will maybe we have a, another individual, or potentially two, show up on the uh, show up on the panel? Only way you're going to be able to answer that question is to show up and find out. That's right. Yep. So we will see you there. Nothing good! <laughs>